Hey musicians and music fans, this is Ari Koinuma and today I wanted to share with you my thoughts on what makes Led Zeppelin's Cashmere so interesting. Apparently this was one of the few songs where all four of them looked at it and go, yeah, that's something special. So let's find out what is so special about this song. Alright, so to begin with the main riff, um, other people have already done tutorials in terms of how to play it, so the focus is not on that. In fact, I didn't even tune the guitar to play it correctly, um, exactly the way Jimmy Page played it. But from a compositional point of view, there are two things. First of all, that it's in chromatic scale, so it's neither major or minor, it's using both, war uh, both uh, kind of uh, notes set of notes so it's very ambiguous in terms of tonality there but more importantly the rhythm is what's interesting about it and that the guitar and bass the main riff is grouping the beat into different set of notes compared to the drums so I set up the metronome into this um, 3-8 beat it goes like this and then actually you can tell if I played over this one that the main riff is divided into basically this rhythm. Alright, so as you can see, the main riff is a group of threes, right? And if you listen to it that way, it sounds like very normal, predictable rhythm. But then you put that on top of a uh, beat that is groupings of four, which is like this. Alright, so as you saw, the main riff is uh, basically groups of three that is sort of superimposed on top of the beat that is divided into fours. And that is creates this push and pull kind of feel where you have two different sort of a rhythmic feel going on at the same time. And that creates that distinct vibe, right? Um, where actually the melodic instruments are doing a shorter grouping so it, you know although the, the song is in very leisurely tempo it's not a very fast song at all it just still you still feel like there's there's a push and if you listen to it carefully the drums are like playing kind of behind and sitting back in the groove while the rest of the instruments are kind of rushing or staying ahead of the beat a little bit and then that again is adds to this uh, interesting thing that is kind of push and pull that's going on in the main riff going there. So while the band is doing the push and pull thing, Robert Plant comes up with this really leisurely laid back kind of melody. It goes something kind of like this. <laughs> So that is not chromatic at all, in fact that is a simple major pentatonic scale and then he's just going up and down that scale, there's no jump, there's no distinct thing and then just kind of floating on top of the push and pull that's happening underneath. And while the chromatic thing, you know, again has sort of a distinct vibe there, but then when he puts this major sounding, happy sounding phrase on top of that, again it just kind of creates a really dense or rich picture during the main verse and there's just lots going on although each part is playing something fairly sparse and simple so that's why it doesn't sound too overwhelming it's dense but it's it's rich right and then that's why it just uh they they dwell on this part many times throughout the eight minute eight plus minute song but you just don't get tired of it because there's just lots of things going on Alright, so there's really not a chorus in this song, but you could call that B section sort of a chorus because it's very distinct and memorable. It goes something like this. Mm -hmm. 
Right, so that is still a chromatic kind of thing. There are lots of notes in there, but if you listen to it, this time he is emphasizing uh, minor tonality because all the sort of the downbeat notes are in the key of D minor. Right, that has sort of, it creates a kind of a bluesy feel and it's a contrast to what uh, Robert Plant is singing in the main verse part. All right, so from there, the band goes into sort of a breakdown uh, that sits on sort of A. And then from there, it goes into this um, bridge section, which is uh, goes back between this G minor and A chord. It goes... And then I'm going to play a bit of the, what the keyboard is playing at the beginning of that. It goes something like this. So, wow. I mean, that's a very exotic sounding scale. There it goes. Right? That's actually, uh, technically, that's a D harmonic minor. but it starts on the G, so it's fourth mode. So that, the, the, the harmonic minor thing is, is very exotic sounding because of that big jump here. And the fun part about that sort of uh, section is that it's it's it has the scale is so colorful and so distinct that you can kind of play whatever a noodle on it and it just still sounds really good. Right, so that middle section is really jammy, and John Paul go John Paul Jones go kind of crazy on his. Uh, uh, keyboard and orchestration there and it just has this uh, really distinct eastern sounding uh, exotic sound to it and that's a, again a different color. This is actually the only section in the song where it's distinctly eastern sounding but it just has a, such a strong sound that you just hear it in one section and then it just sort of defines the whole song. Alright, so after that uh, bridge section, the band settles back into the main riff and uh, Robert Plant comes back and sings his uh, verse melody here, but there's an additional twist that the band adds at this point. Right, so notice this note. That's a G sharp against the key of D, so it, it makes it a Lydian, right? So it's yet another tonal shift that they introduce in the uh, the uh, song is so colorful because it just goes from one tonality to the next and just keeps introducing new colors and then that's why uh, it's just uh, really fun to listen to and it's really fun to play as well. But the band doesn't end there. They go back to the uh, bridge section at the end of the song, you know, between G minor and A. But then they uh, introduce yet one more twist to this song that makes it really colorful. It goes something like this. So that starts out going like a, a G minor. And then from there it morphs into something else. So we just heard a B flat here. And then here's a B natural. And then here's a C. But then it ends up, ends up on C sharp. Right? So it's like actually, uh, it, I, I would interpret this as the one sort of ascending phrase that's transforming from a... D minor starting on G, so that will be a fourth mode. I know this is getting technical. And then transform into uh, D major chord uh, scale. 
you know, um, it, it, this is it's fairly advanced. You know, I, I've analyzed many songs, but not many. I can't think of a phrase where they transform the um, mode or, or tonality in mid phrase kind of like this. It's just really uh, twisted stuff. <laughs> But because it went from more sort of a closed, sad sounding minor tonality to uh, more open sounding because it's uh, the last bit is all sort of a whole step. It just has this sense of, you know, something closing and then opening up to blossom and then they repeat that a few times and you're just like, ah, oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, to conclude, uh, Led Zeppelin's Cashmere, it's a fun song to play and analyze and listen to. It's because it's just so colorful and it's just so creative. Um, the main riff, as we saw, is sort of a combining of uh, groups of three against a group of four, and that rhythmic tension makes it really interesting. But we looked at this number of different... The whole thing, song is in the key of D, more or less, but then there is chromatic, there is major, there is minor, there is lydian, there is this weird concoction that changes mid-phrase. Um, there's just uh, so much variety and, and shift in the tonality when you change the underlying scale or mode that you're using to make up your phrases and chords, it just changes the harmony. And so while the D being the tonal center that stays the same throughout the song, the song goes from, oh, I forgot to mention the exotic uh, Middle Eastern um, harmonic minor scale in the middle, right? Um, so we counted like six different sections uh, or tonality changes in the course of the single song. And it's a tour de force uh, for Led Zeppelin. And that's, I can see where four of them look at it and go, you know, that is something special there. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my uh, thoughts on uh, what makes Kashmir interesting and that I have other videos and other original music. So please subscribe and let me know if you have comments or thoughts and I'll try to respond as soon as I can. Thanks. Through the